number one, I, I know that this whole month we, or this whole summer, we talked about going through the book of Acts, and we will pick that up next week. I kind of felt it would be important to just hone in a little bit on this consecration so we can all kind of get aligned and uh, together, amen, and uh, get to uh, be here, uh, and we'll pick up Acts next week, all right? Acts chapter, I mean, Isaiah chapter 55. Start verse number one, the word of the Lord. Follow along with me. It says, oh, listen, everyone who thirsts, Come to the waters. You that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not great? And your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. And delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. And I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Amen. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, and a leader and a commander for the people. See, you shall call nations that do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified. Verse number 6 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. And let them return to the Lord. That he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Flip over a few uh, chapters there, chapter number 58. I want to read a little bit more about uh, the kind of fast and consecration we are all being called to. The scripture says, shout out and do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and announce to my people their rebellion to the house of Jacob, their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. These are some of the questions that they ask. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interests on your fast day. You oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose to loose the bonds of injustice? To undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke. Listen to these words. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own king. Man, like, man I thought fasting was just not eat. Talking about all kinds of stuff. Verse number 8 says, if you fast like this, then your light shall break forth like the dawn. And your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, here I am. Amen. The word of God for us, the people of God. Let us say thanks be to God. We're going to preach from the topic this morning, amen, as we dig into this season and moment of consecration. Don't be so full of yourself. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless the word of God. Let us pray for us, the people of God. We ask you to hide this word in our heart so we will not sin against you. And since your anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy, let it rest upon me and even the hearers of this word. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Let the people of God say amen. amen. Tell your neighbor, don't be so full of yourself. Or maybe pat yourself on the chest and say, I can't be so full of myself. Any, any something that is easier to tell your neighbor that than for you to pat yourself on the chest and say that? That's the whole point of this term. Amen. Because uh, one of the most difficult things to undergo, dare I say endure, is radical change. To be changed from who you are now to who God would intend for you to be. Despite what we say we want and despite who we say we want to be, despite where we say we want to go, the change required to get to that place is often terrifying. It can be very upsetting. It can be difficult. Quiet as it's kept, uh, undergoing radical change is always something that as human beings, uh, we are very excited and enthusiastic about as long as it's changed outside of us. I mean, our president uh, ran his first term on a slogan, change you can't believe. And it was such an exciting slogan, uh, not because it was change that I need to undergo. Amen. But it was change outside. That we are always more comfortable with changing what's outside of us rather than what needs to be changed inside of us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Say that. Man, we live in one of the most activist parts of the country. Oh. Mm -hmm. And folks love to call for radical change. Oh, we need to change police department. Amen. God ain't shacking to you. God ain't 
shacking up with you. Praise God. God you know, God, 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 God wants to, God wants to, wants to be there uh, and have full, what's the word, occupancy. Hello, somebody. Amen. And when you and I can be clear, Thank <laughs> you. 
Lord. Yeah. But if we can all join in together, we're right in the, 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 the aftermath of Pentecost when they were all together with one heart and one mind, yeah. and suddenly the house was filled with the Spirit, and they all began to boldly proclaim the Word of God and speak in other languages, and all these miraculous things happened. It wasn't because they was all in there by themselves. Because they were all acting and moving together. When we can move with singleness of purpose in mind, God can transform not just the individual, but the whole community. And this is what we're looking for. We're looking for a transformation of our communities, of our families, of our children, and even of ourselves. This is an opportunity, child of God, that you must not allow to slip by. I know it's like, oh, Pastor, but really? Not eating meat is going to change my life around? Not eating Snickers, Twix, candy bars, no nuts, peach cobbler? <laughs> That's going to make a difference? Yes. If you're doing it, as a sacrifice to God. Yes. Joining the community of believers. Now, if you're just starving yourself, you may lose some weight. And that may be a radical change. Some of us need to have. I know I can. But losing weight ain't the number one thing that's wrong with me. I gotta learn to love some folk who I think are unlovable. Amen. I got to learn to forgive some folk who I believe are unforgivable. I got to learn to help some folk who I believe can't be helped. The scripture says that we read, if you don't hide yourself from your kin, you don't know my family. <laughs> from your king. <laughs> but the scripture says that if you share your food with the hunter, share your clothing with the naked, don't hide yourself from your kid, bring the homeless poor into your house, the scripture says that your healing will spring up quick. Are you serious? God. I didn't know about consecration. <laughs> God's 
like, ain't hey, that a shame? I need to talk to your pastor. Make sure he, he, he communicates it better. <laughs> Amen. The invitation is important. Why? The children of Israel, in this particular letter, had just spent decades of, of their lives in exile. They were in Babylon. Why? Because they failed to honor their covenant responsibility. Their ancestors have made a covenant with God that we will obey your commands. We will not, you know, engage in idol worship. We won't do all these different kinds of things. And the first thing that they started to do was the games and stuff that they were told not to do. So God says, I'm going to step back from you and I'm going to allow your enemies to overtake you. But even after they overtake you, I'm still going to protect you. But I'm just going to make sure that, you know, uh, all the blessings that are supposed to follow your obedience do not find you. So they ended up in bondage for some decades, and then they were released and they came back to Jerusalem, and they were trying to rebuild their lives out of the ways of the covenant, but guess what happened? They learned a lot of bad habits while they were in Babylon. So while they were in Babylon, they learned all these other gods and all these other philosophies and all these other patterns of life, and the scripture says that uh, the spirit of the Lord through the prophet called out, listen! Why are you engaging in ways of life that do not honor God and bring you satisfaction? He says, come, take the invitation. Come and buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? The problem with many of us is we take the wrong because believe it, everybody's giving you an invitation. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I got an honest church in here today. Yeah. Yeah. How, many, how many know he's sending, you an yeah. he's sending you an invitation? She's sending you an invitation. They sending you an invitation. The world is sending you an invitation. Everybody got an invitation for you, including God. And the question is, which one are you RSVPing for? Amen. Amen. I'm RSVP for God's invitation or RSVPing for the world. I'm here to tell you that coming to church alone does not constitute the exhausting of the acceptance of this invitation. There's a wonderful passage in the book of Job where it says that the children of Israel want to present themselves before God. And there's another line right after that that says, and the devil came also. <laughs> Ain't this something? People go on to present themselves. Now you know if the devil is bold enough to tag him or to, you know, walk himself up into the presence of God, he ain't got no problems coming to church. Mm -hmm. So you coming to church ain't, you know, I'm glad you're here. Yeah. But that does not constitute the fullness of what it means. That's why all of us need to make sure that when we come to church, we ain't bringing the devil along with us. Amen. One of your questions every morning is, you know, as I ride the church, make sure the devil ain't riding shotgun with me. Amen. There's more to the invitation than you participating in the ministries of the church or participating in the justice work of the world. But God wants to transform you. He wants to help you unlearn some of those behaviors. Those ways of life that keep you full of yourself and not filled with him. But guess what? You and I have to be willing to accept the invitation. Because God don't force nobody to come to his party. Yes. Hello, somebody. That's right. God, 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 God is not like, you know, uh, grabbing you by the ear, telling you, come on, you got to go. God gives all of us the invitation. And the scripture says, whosoever will, let them come. Because if you come, no matter how your life is, it will not stay the same. Amen. 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 Second 
saying you've been invited. You've been invited. Right. 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 Then the second thing the scripture says is that we must learn how to shop twice. There I say shop differently. Tell you never learn how to shop. Learn how to shop. The text tells us, come my wine and milk without money and without price. For why do you spend your money for that which is not great? And your labor for that which does not satisfy. The problem with many of us is that we shop in the wrong schools. Looking for what we will never find. Causing us to be dissatisfied. It's like going to the vegetarian store looking for meat. You going up and down the aisle with your shopping cart and you trying to figure out, man, this store ain't got no meat. What's wrong with this store? Man, I got here too late. No, you want time. <laughs> you just shopping in the wrong store. Some of us spend all of our most precious resources <laughs> in the wrong She's already showed you she ain't gonna satisfy you. But she ain't you with your shower cart. He already showed you he's gonna take advantage of you. And here you are with your shower cart. There's sale today. <laughs> they already showed you themselves. But we Wisely, because yeah. if you don't, child of God, then you will remain 
be a reflection of him. And what, what, what are those characteristics? God wants you to be someone who is at the heart. Someone with power. Agency. Creativity. Love. Patience. Forgiveness. But you don't get all those things by just throwing your seed out there everywhere and just hoping you get a return. Yeah. But you got to invest your teaching in the right places. And then the final thing the scripture says that I find to be compelling in this passage is that you and I must be people who are ready for God to get some glory out of our lives. out of your life. God wants to He wants to, to, to glow through you. He wants to shine through you. You know, sometimes the only times that you can see a light inside of a jar is if the jar has some cracks. Mm -hmm. I know some of us, we do everything we can to like, you know, try to putty up our cracks. We put makeup on it, expensive clothes, you know, houses and cars trying to cover up all our cracks. And the light of God can't shine through your vessel because you trying to cover up everything. Yeah. But wouldn't it be something if this consecration, you began to glory in your tribulation? Yeah. Man, I had to talk about this in first sermon, but I feel like talking about it now. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't it be something if in your weakness, yeah. Christ could be made strong? Yeah. Wouldn't it be something in your, your heart
in your spirit. What does that mean? It means that if you just subtract some food, there will be an exponential addition of anointing. Transfer. 